On today's show, did you know that no two tigers have identical stripes? And that the stripes provide camouflage when the tiger is hunting prey in the wilderness? And that a rattlesnake's fangs transport deadly venom much like a hypodermic needle injects medicine. Plus, when an owl is hunting, its flapping wings are silent, which makes it a deadly airborne predator to unsuspecting prey. Today, we're all about predators. Big cats, wolves, bears, and more. Welcome to the fascinating world of animal science. In Latin, the word terra means land. And here we find all manner of predatory creatures, small, large, solitary, social, all with a singular purpose, survival. Meet these creatures of the earth. Land predators. Where the earth is heated and the air is dry, one terra predator lies in wait. It shoots out and sticks its prey, piercing the flesh like a poison arrow. Its victim will soon be helpless. Meet the rattlesnake. If you are ever in the desert and hear the ominous sound of the rattlesnake, you are very lucky indeed. That rattle, twitching at an incredible 50 times per second, means you are being warned, stay away. A poor rodent who wanders in the vicinity of a rattlesnake never gets to hear that sound, and it becomes food. The damage is done through an organic transportation system unique to the rattlesnake. There is a venom gland in the back of the snake's head connected to a duct the venom is carried through that duct to the fangs, which deliver the deadly bite, much like a syringe would deliver medicine. When they strike, the venom is causing mostly tissue damage. One of the reasons they have this tissue damage is the venom is starting to digest the prey as it's dying. Knowing that it is just a matter of time before the prey animal becomes disabled, the rattlesnake will bide its time, saving energy while keeping track of its wandering victim. And when the time is right, it will feed on its prey. A wolf's howl reaches a volume of about 90 decibels, roughly as loud as a jackhammer and it can be heard a full six miles away. Once it trumpets its call, other wolves assemble in a pack to prepare for a hunt. The pack, usually five to 11 members, will head downwind so as to conceal their scent from prey. Then their keen senses go to work. A wolf can hear the sound of a snapping twig and can detect the scent of a prey animal from up to two miles away. Wolves have about 200 million scent cells. That's 40 times more than humans have. Once a wolf pack finds a prey target, they split up, encircle it, and move in for the kill. When it feeds, the wolf's jaws can actually crush bone, allowing it to get to the nutrient-rich bone marrow. And the wolf will gorge itself, holding up to 22 pounds of food in its stomach at once. After such a full meal, the wolf is satisfied and will not have to hunt for another two weeks. Every year, millions of Pacific salmon leave the ocean and head up into the rivers of Alaska, Canada, and Russia. Their mission is to lay their eggs and reproduce, and they'll spend every last ounce of energy swimming upstream to do so. The salmon face many obstacles in their quest to reproduce, but none is more daunting than the brown bear. Everything about the brown bear is huge. 
They have massive skulls, jaws, shoulders, noses, and even enormous backsides. But the body part that helps them the most with catching the slippery salmon is their massive claws. The brown bear's claws can grow up to four inches in length. That's about the size of our fingers. The long curved claws act as natural fishing hooks, allowing them to easily snatch up the nutrient-rich salmon, which they eat as appetizer, main course, and dessert. This is bliss for the brown bear. When we come back, you'll learn how an owl is able to rotate its head in almost a full circle. You'll find out how this bird spears fish with the help of its neck as we take a look at some of nature's most fearsome air predators, right here on Animal Science. Far above the earth, they soar with the wind, so graceful in flight. But don't let appearances fool you. Hardwired into their brains are hunting instincts every bit as fearsome as any land animal. Meet nature's air force, the air predators. The great blue heron. At first glance, this graceful wading bird may not look all that menacing, but tag along with one for a day and you'll soon see that the great blue heron is also a great predator. Great blue herons mainly eat fish, which they catch using a secret weapon, their neck. The great blue heron has a freakishly long neck. It's about a foot long. That's about a quarter the length of its whole body. The long neck is like a coiled spring, ready to explode with tremendous power at just the right moment. That's some pretty good fishing equipment, and it's not for sale. Mother Nature has endowed every predator with its own special talent and equipment for hunting. Picture one who flies like a predator drone over the earth, scoping its prey from every angle, unseen, unheard, a silent, deadly killer. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the owl. Just like the great blue heron, the owl has a highly specialized neck. It's not long like the heron's, but it's incredibly flexible. When an owl is looking for food, it can rotate its head about 270 degrees, almost a full circle. To make matters even more ominous, the owl likes to hunt in the dark of night. And when it's hunting, this is what it sounds like. Listen carefully, everyone. Owls are probably the only birds that fly without making any noise. Their wing and tail feathers are covered with these very soft velvety filaments. And those filaments really muffle the sounds that are made by the feathers when they flap their wings. Its reward for all this talent is a hard-earned meal. and it will gladly share this meal with younger members of the family so that they too can grow up, thrive, and learn the ways of survival. Now, why is it that America's national bird is called a bald eagle? It's clearly not bald, but it is bald with an E at the end, which in Old English means white. So today we call it a white eagle. These high-flying predators will eat almost anything, but their favorite food is fish. Not the easiest things to catch. The first challenge for the bald eagle is to identify a target. It does this using a superior sense of sight. The bald eagle can spot a small fish in the water while flying several hundred feet above. It then swoops down into action. Just imagine you were a little fish like this one. 
you're swimming around, minding your own business, and then, swoosh, you've been caught. And this fisherman is not going to let you go. The bald eagle has razor sharp talons, and they clamp down with incredible force. About 400 pounds of pressure per square inch. That's 10 times stronger than the grip of a human. Just another fascinating example of how nature has endowed its creatures with the tools they need for survival. Coming up, big cats at their most fearsome and dangerous. Why lions are such proficient hunters and how the leopard is able to hunt in the dead of night right here on Animal Science. You can find them all around the world in all different colors, shapes, and sizes. These creatures are at once beautiful and fiercely menacing. They are the big cats. In Africa and Asia, the leopard roams silently through the wilderness. It's uncommon to see this mysterious cat in the daytime because the leopard is a creature of the night. And at night, it has a major advantage. The leopard's night vision is among the most powerful of all animals. They can see better in the dark than they can during the day. I remember seeing a, a nature film once where a leopard was actually walking between members of a herd of, I believe it was some kind of gazelle. And it was walking back and forth between these and they knew it was there, but they couldn't quite see it. And it was almost like it was shopping to pick out the animal it wanted to attack. Leopards have a special structure behind each eye called the tapetum lucidum, which is Latin for bright tapestry. This piece of natural architecture works like a mirror. It reflects visible light back through the retina, increasing the light available in the eye's photoreceptors. Here is what a human might see in the dead of night. Nothing much, but the leopard's special architecture turns the light switch on to the eternal dismay of its prey. Then it will often drag its prey up trees for peaceful dining. The leopard has the strongest chest and shoulder muscles of any big cat, making it a superior climber. It is truly one of nature's most impressive creatures. One of the more common big cats is the cougar, or the panther, or the mountain lion, or forget it. There are actually about 40 names for this creature. Found throughout North and South America, the cougar is a fantastic athletic specimen. It can high jump 18 feet in the air. How? In proportion to its body, the cougar has the largest hind legs of any cat. They're like pogo sticks with rocket boosters attached to them. They propel the cougar up and out of the crouch position with great explosion. It needs this advantage because it's an ambush predator. Stalking, sitting, waiting, and then pouncing with a quick burst of energy. The lion is a study in contrast. It spends most of its life lying around doing nothing much at all. But then there is that small amount of time when it becomes the master of its universe, one of the most fearsome predators on Earth. Lions are ambush predators. With pads on their feet, they move silently through the grass and pounce when the time is right. They often subdue their prey by strangulation. While the human bite has been measured at 120 pounds of pressure per square inch, the powerful jaws of a lion clamp down on the neck with over 600 pounds of pressure. The lion's entire array of weaponry makes it one of nature's most formidable predators. Measuring up to 11 feet long and weighing close to 700 pounds, the solitary tiger is the largest of all cats. It 
is beautiful to look at, but don't get too close. Those magnificent stripes, so pleasing to the eye, actually serve a purpose. The stripes are largely there to sort of break up the silhouette of the animal and make it distorted looking to prey, things like that. Same thing with zebras. When zebras are running, for example, and they run in herds, it confuses lions. And a similar kind of thing works for the tiger. And it is true that no two tigers have the same stripes, much like no two humans have the same fingerprints. And once they've trapped their prey, it's almost always too late. With its ability to hunt on both land and in water, there is no safe haven from the tiger. When we come back, it's a battle royal between two of the world's most menacing creatures, the alligator versus the crocodile. Who will win this duel in the pool? Find out next, right here on Animal Science. In this corner, hailing from the Florida Keys, weighing in at 1,100 pounds, reptilian ravager, crocodilus, barcodilus, and in this corner, 800 pounds from Florida, the Delta Force, Alligatorida, Alligatorida. Every animal uses different weapons in a fight. We humans tend to use whatever body part works, but mostly our arms and legs. Deer use their antlers. Gators and crocs use their mouths. The teeth of both the gator and the crocodile are used for ripping and tearing, not chewing. There is, however, one notable difference. The croc's teeth are bigger than the alligator's. You can see them even when the croc closes its mouth. There is a subtle but important difference in the shape of their jaws. The crocodile's jaw is V-shaped, while the alligator's is U-shaped. Both have enormous jaw strength, but the gator's wider U-shaped jaw allows it to bite down on a larger area. Here's what it would do to a human skull. Chester, smile. All right, you ready? <laughs> the reason why they have such a strong bite is they're dependent on their head to hold the prey. So if you're gonna hold something, struggling and kicking and flailing and all that sort of thing, and it's trying to get away, you have to have something that can really hold on to this. You have to have the strength to be able to pull it into the water and drown it. The judgment? Animal science gives the slight advantage to the gator in the weaponry category. Hold the cheering and booing until the end, please. In terms of agility, every species has its own special talents. We humans, with our coordinated limbs, have the ability to excel at any number of activities. Dogs, with their quickness and balance, also display great agility. Gators and crocs show agile traits as well, especially in the water. This is mainly because of their tail, which accounts for half their entire body length. It propels them through the water with unparalleled grace. Both animals' ability to swim is also aided by their webbed feet. Herein lies another small anatomical difference. The webbing on the hind feet of an alligator goes about halfway up its toe. The crocodile's webbing is more extensive, reaching about three quarters of the way up the toe. This is a tough call, but in terms of sheer agility, animal science gives the nod to the crocodile. It's one to one on the judge's scorecard. When we come back, we'll find out which animal has the best defenses, and then we'll crown the heavyweight champion of the reptile world, right here on Animal Science. In our quest to determine who would win in a battle of reptilian heavyweights, we've given the alligator the edge in weaponry and the crocodile the edge in agility. There's one category left, 
Which animal has the better defenses against attack? Both gators and crocs have a natural defense, armor. These bony plates, called osteoderms, run down their backs and protect their bodies. But when we compare the two creatures side by side, we see that the crocodile has more osteoderms than the gator. The animal science judgment? The croc wins in the defense category. And so in this heavyweight battle, animal science gives the nod to the reptilian ravager, Crocodilidae, by a two to one split decision. But who knows? Maybe in 20,000 years, there will be a rematch and evolution will endow the alligator with a new weapon that shifts the balance. And then all you alligator fans will have something to cheer about. <laughs>